The June primary in Maine takes place two weeks from today. In the contested races, Democrats and Republicans will choose their nominees for governor, and Democrats will choose their nominee for the U.S. House of Representatives in Maine's second district. One of the Democratic candidates for Congress in the second district is Jared Golden. He served in Iraq and Afghanistan with the U.S. Marine Corps and is now a state representative from Lewiston and the Democratic assistant majority leader in the Maine House of Representatives. Good to have you here. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Let's That's start good. with what's happening right now with the United States Congress. This is a remarkable statistic. It is on track to pass less legislation than any Congress since the one that served from 1851 to 1853. The institution of Congress is broken. How would you, if you get elected, try to mend it? Well, I think you just got to go down there with an intention to work hard and, and get things done. It's an election year, so that kind of leads, I think, to Congress not uh, wanting to work on the tough issues, but that's not what we should be focused on. It's not about getting reelected. It's about staying focused on, on delivering on the things that we know need to be done for, for the people of our states and of the whole country. That sounds like you've got goodwill. It sounds encouraging. But others have gone with that attitude, and nothing has happened. The problem has gotten worse. So obviously, there needs to be a dramatic change. How would you effect dramatic change there? Well, I tell voters to elect people like myself, people with hardworking values. There's 435 members in the House, and there's 100 senators. So to think one person is going to change that entire system just isn't realistic. It's going to mean electing the right people. Part of the problem is that there is uh, a, a sense of partisanship that is far worse than what we've seen in the last, had, had seen uh, after World War II. Uh, the Democrats are doing their thing, the Republicans their thing, and they do not work together. What's an issue where you would disagree with a lot of your fellow Democrats? Oh, I mean, that's, that's I, I guess, an interesting question. Uh, I've talked a lot about campaign finance reform recently and, and the need for Democrats to hold themselves accountable if they want to be able to hold the other side accountable. And so sometimes that means telling members of your own party or, or leadership uh, that they got to walk the walk and, and push real hard for campaign finance reform, getting money out of politics. Let's talk about federal debt. Right now it's at about $20 trillion. That's $20 trillion. Does that worry you? Of course it does. I think it worries everybody. I think we all know that's a problem. So what would you do to try to help fix that? I, I think about the Clinton administration. They actually had a balanced budget. They had a deal that they worked out with Congress. I think that they had the top marginal raise set at like 39, just over 39 percent. And they had proposed uh, an equal deal where I think it was for every $5 in spending cuts, they thought we should get four in new revenue from the very wealthy and, and, and a dollar uh, from, from the middle class. And at the end of the day, they were able to balance our budget and say, we need to get on track to spending down on that debt. Uh, of course, things have gone in, in the opposite direction since 2001, so obviously we need to make a commitment to, to finding a way to, to balance our budget. If you got in there, what would be some of the big money programs that you think we could cut? Well, I think that we could talk about coming home from Afghanistan. That's something that a promise that was made in the last campaign cycle, and instead what we've seen is a, is a doubling down and sending more troops in. We're spending trillions of dollars on, on these wars overseas. I fought in, in two of them in Afghanistan and Iraq, and to me that seems like we're spending a lot of money over there that we could be spending back here home in, in America and in the state of Maine. Would you pull U.S. troops out of, out of Iraq, or would you vote to pull the U.S. troops out of Iraq right away as soon as you land in Congress? I think the m first thing that Congress should have done is taken a vote to put them there. But uh, I think that, uh, you know, less Iraq right now, w w like I was talking about with Afghanistan, they've actually decided to increase troop numbers. I don't see any evidence that that's the right way to go at this point in time. You served in the U.S. Marines, as you said. More people have been killed in American schools this year than have been killed while deployed in the U.S. military. What would you suggest as a realistic remedy for trying to address school shootings? Well, I think it's a complex issue that's going to uh, require a, a complex set of, uh, of problem solving and, and solutions. So there's not, I think, just one thing. We'd like it to be that simple. Uh, I think we could start with, with uh, background checks on all sales. This is not about taking weapons away from, from guns away from people who, who are the good actors. It's about keeping them away from bad actors. Is that realistic, though? Because that, that measure has been brought up time and time and time again, and nothing has happened. We started this conversation by talking about how Congress is broken. We have seen shooting after shooting after shooting, and nothing has happened. So what is going to change that cycle? 
Well, uh, like I, uh, well, geez, you know, yeah, it's not about what they haven't failed to do in, in previous Congresses. It's what we can do moving forward. And uh, I, if there's anything that I would stay focused on, it would be saying, let's find a way to find an agreement on, on background checks on all sales. Do you think that people... I had to take one to join the Marines. I had to go through a background check. Uh, so, uh, you know, why wouldn't we do that to, to say, if, if you want to own a firearm in this country, then we're just going to do a background check. If you've got nothing to hide, then there's no problem here. All right. We're going to let that be the last word because we're out of time. Jared Golden, Democratic candidate for Congress in Maine's 2nd District. Thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. Thanks for having us. And stay with us. We're going to be back right after this.